Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can use Springbones to produce secondary animations which will enhance and energize the end result of your character motions as well as different Springbone structures which can generate different effects. Let's start off by taking a look at the basic Springbone structure. To utilize the spring effect, you'll need to ensure that your mesh first has a bone structure. You can see a very basic one here. If I open up the spring editor and hit preview, you can see that there are currently no spring effects assigned. To get that set up, I'm going to use bone 1 as the parent bone and then assign a group. Ensure that include child bones is selected. Now when we preview, you can see that the spring effect is assigned. Even if we're using the second or third bones in the hierarchy to drive the animation, the child bones will still exhibit the spring effect. Let's move on to something a bit more complex in setting up the spring effects for a character. Whenever you see a small spring icon on the thumbnail of an asset, that means that the spring effect has already been assigned. In the case of this character, let's take her into composer mode. In the spring editor, you can see that there are already a couple of bone groups that have been assigned with spring effects. We can preview to see how they perform and you'll notice that the bone structure and parameter values for both are quite different. If we go back into stage mode and open up the spring editor, you'll see that those groups are listed in the spring editor and also in the timeline as two different subtracts under spring. This means that you can control and animate them separately. To learn more about spring animation basics, be sure to check out the dedicated tutorial on our Reillusion Courses page. Let's look at another method for setting up spring bones. With this seal character, I'm setting up another simple bone structure, only this time adding a branch at the tail and another bone hierarchy from the neck to the head. Here I'll select the top bone of the body hierarchy and assign group. You'll notice upon preview that we have a spring effect for the body now, but not for the separate head hierarchy. Let's use the same character mesh only this time I'm going to create a bone structure in more of a lightning pattern, while again still creating another separate hierarchy branch for the head. Notice that when I do this in preview, we can get a much stronger squash and stretch effect when the character moves from side to side, as the zigzag bone pattern performs almost like a spring. Therefore, it's important to be aware of the patterns and locations of your bones on the character mesh, as they can cause dramatically different effects on the animation results as you can see in this comparison. There are a number of different bone structures that you can apply spring effects to in order to get some really cool and creative results as you can see here. The more you get used to utilizing spring effects, the more you'll be able to envision unique structures to achieve different results for various scenarios. Okay, let's take a look at the spring animation templates. You can find a number of free embedded ones under free resources in your content manager under props. These templates act as dummy structures that you can customize the spring effects for. You can take it into composer mode and edit the sprites to customize the appearance. Let's apply this T-type bone template and take it into composer mode to test this. You can see when I test it out from the spring editor that the spring effects have already been assigned. To change the sprite mesh for the template, Simply enter into the sprite editor and replace the image assigned to the main bone. I'll replace this with a butterfly image and you'll definitely want to ensure that you scale and position the image properly over your skeletal structure. From there, I can again enter into the spring editor and do a quick preview to see how this template skeletal structure will drive the new sprite mesh that we assigned. We encourage you to test out these template bone structures for different character types and see which one works best for your needs. Okay, finally, let's look at global settings and performance. If you go into the motion section of your preferences, you'll see a checkbox for bake spring dynamics to motion. This ensures that when you play back your animation, that the spring effect will bake to its respective track, allowing you to easily save it for future use. Here I have a simple transform animation set up for this snowman. In the spring editor, you can see that there are currently no spring effects set up for the two doll characters to his right. 
To save this motion complete with spring effect and transfer it over to the other characters, we can first enter into the 2D motion folder under the custom tab in the content manager. Make sure our source character for the motion is selected and then hit save. You'll be prompted to enter in the name and asset type after which the animation will appear in your content manager. When doing this, please ensure that your project length is set to the duration of the animation that you want to save. Otherwise you may have a much longer motion than necessary with a lot of blank data. You can then apply it to the other characters in your scene. Please ensure that the characters that you are applying to also have the same bone structure when doing this. Spring effects are a real-time simulation that may eat up some of your performance on slower machines. If you don't want it to simulate in real time in your scene, you can always go to uncheck Simulate Spring Physics in the editor, which will disable the spring effects simulation. If you have this checked, however, you'll be able to do things like move around your character with a 2D motion key editor and see the live spring effects in real time. You can also choose to disable the spring effect simulation during real time playback from the same section of the preferences as well. If we play back before, we'll see everything perform as usual. However, if I uncheck that box from the preferences, you'll see the playback occur without the spring effects. That's a bit more useful info about spring effects and various settings that you can utilize to get really cool results. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.